born in Czechoslovakia, and Czechoslovakia, unlike the other Slava countries, were not anti-Semitic. I grew up, went to Czech school, my friends were Czech, the priest's son was a good friend of mine, never heard of being called a Jew or anything, unlike in Poland or Lithuania or Estonia, in those countries. We went to Czech school, the Catholics went to public school, and uh, till everything was fine, no problem till 1939. I come from a small town named Irshava in the Carpathian Mountains, it was Czechoslovakia at that time. And my, we were a family of five, my mother, father, and three children. I was the oldest. And I had a sister and a brother, younger. He lived in a little town, first in Czechoslovakia, and then it turned to Russia, and then it turned to, uh, when the Germans came in, he moved to Hungary to my, my maternal, my mother's uh, mother, which was in, in Hungary. And we lived there until 1944, and hoping to survive the Germans there, but it didn't work out that way. We had a farm, a little farm, and we worked on the farm. And also, I used to sew for my neighbors, made a little extra money, I had a machine. And uh, my father, we all worked on the farm, and he, on uh, weekends, he used to have a little butcher uh, place, and he used to sell kosher meat. Not chicken, but beef. He used to buy a small little calf and sell it to the Jewish people. We, we lived with my uh, uncles, lived right next to us, my, my father's brothers and their children. They had a lot of kids. He had three brothers on the same one next to the other. They built their homes and we were always together with the cousins. My family was uh, for five generations in uh, Lithuania. Uh, Lithuania was a very different society from uh, the other countries, particularly uh, Poland and Germany. Lithuania was a, a, a community or, or a country of higher learning. In fact, if you go back and you do some of the studying of uh, the background of Jewish uh, learning, it, it was like the Boston of Europe. There were the, the major yeshivot, the major houses of learning that rabbis went for training were located in Lithuania and they were very progressive. Uh, before the war, life in Lithuania was phenomenal, was great. Uh, my father's family had a foundry. They uh, made uh, equipment for farms and horseshoes, and it was a steel foundry. Uh, my mother's family, they had a, uh, uh, an inn, like a, a motel, so to speak, and they did very well. In fact, they were very prosperous. They had a telephone, they had a radio. You know, they lived pretty good before the war. Um, the Nazis rolled in in June of 1941, and obviously things changed drastically. My parents were among the fortunate ones who were able to leave Poland immediately, almost immediately, after Hitler uh, invaded Poland. My mother's family had already gone to Australia and we had permits to, to enter Australia, but we didn't have visas to go across Europe from Poland to get the ship in Italy. The came to get us right after Passover, which we didn't even have bread in the house. They didn't tell us where we we're going or what to do. They just told us to pack up stuff, whatever you want to take, take it with you. They got notified a couple days before that they were going to all be taken, so they could make arrangements for their animals and put things up. And they did. Um, they took their animals to their neighbor. And um, I think they, they had some household goods, some pots and different things that they, they left or they put in special places. And then they packed their bags and were, were taken away. Well, the town was surrounded by the Hungarian soldiers and the police gave us two hours to pack. Pack as much as you could carry. Now, what do you pack? You don't know where you're going, for how long, 
if it's going to be hot or cold. So we did the best we could. There were no, not enough suitcases. So pillowcases, bags. I grabbed a large pair of pants, tied up the legs, and stuffed the small stuff like socks on the wear in the legs, and filled it up with the rest of the clothing that I thought I was going to wear. I was lucky enough to get a job in a factory where we repaired sewing machines. And we then in the ghetto worked for the Germans pro producing clothing and shoes. And in, in return, they brought in food, very meager food, very little food. Eventually, uh, uh, people started to die. My grandmother had sewn a, a few coins into um, a pocket or the inside of a lining of something, and the Germans had said, or the Hungarians, had said to give all your valuables in, that you had to turn everything in. And it was, I think, in a little handkerchief tied up. And my mother says that she just, for, you know, she just didn't do it, she forgot. And when they came and they inspected, they found it and um, demanded that one member of the family had to come with them and they were going to have to pay for that with their lives. And um, I, I, I was older when my mother told me this story. I don't remember when, but she said, so I, I said to her, well, who went? And she said, I did. She said, I couldn't send my parents, they were old. and. I couldn't have, you know, was my younger brother or sister, I was the one who had to go. So um, she got up and went with them and they had a few other people and she said to me that she thought she was going to be killed then because they had machine guns and they were, you know, it was very, very frightening. When they lined them all up, they made them wait there for a few hours, I think, and then they just let them go. So she said she just walked away from it and went back to their spot on the ground. They took us back to the railroad station and they had those cattle cars there and they kept saying, family, stay together, keep together. And they filled up the wagon with a hundred people and put in two buckets, a bucket of water to the right and an empty bucket for facilities and the doors were locked. It was dark, and there was not enough room for everybody to sit. We were standing against each other, and, uh, and then we saw uh, just fields, you know, as we were driving, we didn't know which way we were going. So when we arrived to Auschwitz, we saw a big sign, and it said, Arbeit macht frei, it means work makes you free. There the train stopped, they chased us off. Leave everything there, everything will follow you. Lined up men and boys to the right, women and children to the left. And what did we see there? On the right side behind the fence, there were old people walking with canes. Young children were playing, and the band in those striped uniforms were playing Jewish music. When they got off the trains, the, the Polish women who were working there kept telling, they told her half-sisters, give the babies to the old people, give the babies to the old people. But they looked at them like, who would do that? Like they, she remembers, she, she said, you know, we can't do that. We're, we're not going to, to give up the babies. And, you know, the mothers didn't understand that the, the Polish Jews were trying to save the lives of the, of the mothers, but they just didn't know. His doctor was at the greeting us with his little stick and the white gloves. And he says, you go this way and you go that way. And they separated me from my whole family. They took us in line and they selected me out of it, all that. And we went into a, it looked like kind of showers. Some of them were the showers and some of them were showers that where they took us to, to, and they shaved our hair off. They gave me a dress, took my, my beautiful coat and I just had to throw it down and leave it there. 
at the end of the war during the death march when um, when they were marching the Jews back into Germany because they hadn't done enough yet and people were they they marched them day and night people were dropping and the Nazis were just shooting them dead on the side and and she told me the story you know it was hard to believe that she could be doing that and when I said how, how did you do it she said I just knew I had to keep going and we kept going but Gita her younger sister wanted to stop and she kept saying I can't go anymore I don't care if I live or die I just just leave me here alone but my mother wouldn't do it she wouldn't leave her she she said she held her up and dragged her until Gitu said she wouldn't go anymore and um, when she did that she was going slower and slower and my mother wouldn't leave her she said I'm not going to leave you well just walk slower and slower and they walked slower and um, they ran away into the woods. They made us dig eight graves, and I dug these graves with my own hand. I, I, I survived by making a hole on a cemetery, and I utilized this as a hiding place, not far for these, from these eight holes, as a matter of fact. And there I hid 16 people, and, and and there, I, I, my, my father and mother, I hid, my, I hid them too, and we survived. My older brother took the two of us, and he made us promise that we would never do anything to help the German accomplish. He says, we will have to do everything that we can to survive. And one thing I'm going to ask you, never give up hope. We were liberated from the camps with other nationalities in Auschwitz. There was Greeks, and there was Yugoslavs, and there was French, and there was Germans too, and there was Polish people, and Russians, and Jews. One morning we woke up, and there were no lights and no Germans. So after a while, people that could walk went outside, and they came back screaming and dancing and hollering. There are no Germans, the gates are open, let's go outside. Well, those that could walk went outside and <clears throat> me and two of my brother's friends, they were two years older, we rolled off the bed and pulled ourselves under with the fingers and pushed with the legs to get outside. We came outside and we saw the tanks coming in and when we saw that American flag, I can't describe the happiness, the joy of that day. I stayed here and I met my husband David in New York and I had a nice family. It was very difficult in the beginning. You come to a new country new language, uh, you have to look for a job, no education, no trade, and uh, so it was very difficult to get started. And uh, the people itself didn't talk about it, so we didn't, because we were concentrating to start a new life. So I got married, have a family, three children, and I wanted to make sure one thing, that they get something that I couldn't get, is an education. As I was getting older, I'm now 74 years old, so I decided to, to go on the part to the living. So I can tell these ch children, and they should tell their children, what happened? And what a wonderful, wonderful thing is this whole March of the Living. Of course, I came in, I remember this hostile territory. But here I walked in as a, I call this a, my victory march. 
For my mother, that trip was, was the most important, I think, experience of her later years. Um, for many years, she did not want to go back to Auschwitz. But at the very end of her life, she, she really needed to go for closure. I think she, she needed to see it, it physically again and to see where she lost her parents. But it was also such an uplifting spiritual experience for her to share her story with the kids. Um, and to know that people were interested and cared and would make sure that her story would live on. That was, it was really, it was really important to her. I know that in my heart, I always miss the fact that I didn't have those grandparents. Although I had my Zeta, who, you know, was larger than life. But I miss the fact that I didn't have those grandparents or uncles or aunts on my father's side. And I didn't really, you know, know anything about them. And he never really told me anything about them. After he passed away, I began to say, it was stupid, why didn't you ask questions? And I think that would be my message to the children of today. Ask a lot of questions of your, about your parents and your grandparents. Because once they're gone, you don't get those answers. The biggest fear is that the world will forget hate, prejudice. You hear it, you see it. Don't let it go by. Speak up. My, my kids will know it. And I want the world to know it. I think that's the most important thing that people should not forget so that my parents and all my family didn't die of it. Thank you.